Northern Mali Conflict, Wikipedia Article Audio Ongoing Background Tuareg Rebellion Coup d'a copyright tat Continued Offensive Islamsta Euro Nationalist Conflict Battle of Gao and Aftermath Takeover of Duinsa and Ma Copyright Naka Foreign Intervention MNLA Realigns with the Malian Government Battle of Kana and French Intervention in AMA Copyright NAS Hostage Crisis Malian Northward Advance Guerrilla Face Reported Deaths of Abdulhamid Abu Zaid and Mokhtar Belmokhtar UN Peacekeeping Force Chadian Withdrawal Peace Deal End of Ceasefire and Renewal of Conflict January 2014 February 2014 Casualties 2012 2013 2014 2015 2016 Government of Mali 2017 Human Rights Concerns France, e Kaos Claims Against Separatists and Islamists Claims Against Islamists Chad, Burundi, Gabon, South Africa, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, China, Germany, Sweden Supported by Non-State Combatants Ibrahim Boubakar Kiata, Dion Kounditraora Copyright, Amadou Sinogo, Amadou Tumani Tura Copyright, Sadio Gassima, El Haji A.G. Gamma, Emmanuel Macron, Frana O.I.S. Hall and Pierre de Villers, A. Prathousand Dward Guillaudet, Colonel Thierry Burkhardt, Brigade General Gregory de Saint Quintin, Shihu Usman Abdul Qadir, Yigabra, Mahamat de Copyright by Itno, Abdelaziz Hassan Adam A. Euro, Omar Baikom. 6,000 A Euro, 7,000, 3,000, 2,000, 1,200, 1,000, 733, 650, 500, 500, 500, 500, 450, 395, 300, 250, 144, 120, 50, total, 23,564 plus 545. 1, 200 a euro 3, 000 164 plus killed, 400 captured, total, 1, 000 a euro 1, 500 plus killed, captured, or deserted. 85 killed, 197 plus wounded, 12 captured, 38 killed, 74 wounded, 16 killed. 2 killed, several wounded, 1 killed, 1 wounded, 28 killed, 4 killed, 4 killed, 3 killed, 1 killed, 3 killed, 1 wounded, 2 killed, 2 wounded, 1 killed, 1 killed, 4 wounded, 1 killed, 1 killed, 2 killed, 6 a euro 65 killed. 26A Euro 123 killed. 60 captured. 115 killed. Tuareg Rebellion. 2012 Malian coup d'a copyright tat. Internal conflict in Azawad. 
Foreign Intervention 2014 Fighting Other Incidents The Northern Mali Conflict, Mali Civil War, or Mali War refers to armed conflicts that started from January 2012 between the northern and southern parts of Mali in Africa. On January 16, 2012, several insurgent groups began fighting a campaign against the Malian government for independence or greater autonomy for northern Mali, an area of northern Mali they called Azawad. The National Movement for the Liberation of Azawad, an organization fighting to make this area of Mali an independent homeland for the Tuareg people, had taken control of the region by April 2012. On March 22, 2012, President Amadou Tamani Toura copyright was ousted in a coup d'a copyright tat over his handling of the crisis, a month before a presidential election was to have taken place. Mutinous soldiers, calling themselves the National Committee for the Restoration of Democracy and State, took control and suspended the Constitution of Mali. As a consequence of the instability following the coup, Mali's three largest northern city Asa Euro Kedal, Gao and Timbuktu A Euro were overrun by the rebels on three consecutive days. On April 5, 2012, after the capture of Duinsa, the MNLA said that it had accomplished its goals and called off its offensive. The following day, it proclaimed the independence of northern Mali from the rest of the country, renaming it as Awad. The MNLA were initially backed by the Islamist group Ansar Dine. After the Malian military was driven from northern Mali, Ansar Dine and a number of smaller Islamist groups began imposing strict Sharia law. The MNLA and Islamists struggled to reconcile their conflicting visions for an intended new state. Afterwards, the MNLA began fighting against Ansar Dine and other Islamist groups, including Movement for Oneness and Jihad in West Africa, a splinter group of Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghrib. By July 17, 2012, the MNLA had lost control of most of northern Mali's cities to the Islamists. The government of Mali asked for foreign military help to retake the north. On January 11, 2013, the French military began operations against the Islamists. Forces from other African Union states were deployed shortly after. By February 8, the Islamist-held territory had been retaken by the Malian military, with help from the International Coalition. Tuareg separatists have continued to fight the Islamists as well, although the MNLA has also been accused of carrying out attacks against the Malian military. A peace deal between the government and Tuareg rebels was signed on June 18, 2013 but on September 26, 2013 the rebels pulled out of the peace agreement and claimed that the government had not respected its commitments to the truce. Fighting is still ongoing even though French forces are scheduled for withdrawal. A ceasefire agreement was signed on February 19. 2015 in Algiers, Algeria, but sporadic terrorist attacks still occur. In the early 1990s Tuareg and Arab nomads formed the movement Populaire de la Euro trademark as a wood slash Azawad people's movement and declared war for independence of the northern part of Mali. Despite peace agreements with the government of Mali in 1991 and 1995 a growing dissatisfaction among the former Tuareg fighters, who had been integrated into the military of Mali, led to new fighting in 2007. 
despite historically having difficulty maintaining alliances between secular and Islamist factions the national movement for the liberation of Azawad allied itself with the Islamist groups Ansar Dine and Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb and began the 2012 Northern Mali conflict. The MNLA was an offshoot of a political movement known as the National Movement for Azawad prior to the insurgency. After the end of the Libyan Civil War, an influx of weaponry led to the arming of the Tuareg in their demand for independence. The strength of this uprising and the use of heavy weapons, which were not present in the previous conflicts, were said to have surprised Malian officials and observers. The Tuareg rebellion began driving government forces out of northern Mali in January 2012. Malian President Amadou Toumani Toura copyright is ousted in a coup d'a copyright tet led by Amadou Sinogo, northern Mali completely captured by rebels by April 2012, independent state of Azawad declared by the MNLA and briefly supported by Ansar Dine, Islamist groups and Mojwe seize northern Mali from MNLA and impose Sharia law in the region asterisk France and some African states intervene and help the Malian army to retake. Most of northern Mali, peace deal between the government and Tuareg rebels signed on June 18, 2013, peace deal ended after Malian soldiers opened fire on unarmed protesters. Cease fire signed on February 20, 2015 between Malian government and the coordination of Azawad movements, Mali's leaders have rejected autonomy, but are willing to consider devolved local powers, low-level fighting continues. Destruction of ancient monuments in Timbuktu Claims against the Malian army and loyalists In popular culture Cease fire. Military of Mali. Ganda ISO, National Liberation Front of Azawad. Boko Haram, 100, Ansar Dine, 300. First Minika, Agil Huk, Tin Hama, in Imsal, and a copyright Rambukan, Tesalit, Nia Funka copyright, Tinzawaden. Tinzalane, Gumakura, Tesit, Sadir, 1 St. Ketal. 1st Timbuktu, 1 St. Gao, Idlamane, Tagarangabat, 2 Nd Ma Copyright Naka, Kalil, in Arab. Operation Serval, Afisma, Eutm, Minusma, Kana, Diabali, 2 Nd Gao. 3 R D Gao, 4 T H Gao, Ifagas, Panther, Kalil, Imininas, Tin Karatan, Tyre Gacentar, 2 N D Timbuktu, 5 T H Gao, Jabak, 3 R D Timbuktu, 1 S T Ketal, Hamakalaji, Arewan, Kondwi, Dayat, 2 N D Ketal. March 2015 Bamako shooting, March 2015 Ketal attack, 2015 Bamako hotel attack, November 2015 Ketal attack, 2016 Nampala attack, 2017 Gao bombing, June 2017 Bamako attack, in Delamaine. State crisis the establishment of a Tuareg state has been a long-term goal of the MNLA, since it began a rebellion in 1962. Thereafter, Mali has been in a constant struggle to maintain its territory, food crisis, Malia Euro trademark s economy has an extreme dependence on outside assistance, which has led economic community of West African states to blockade to subdue the military junta, political crisis, the mutiny led to the fall of the president. Though dominated by Tuaregs, the MNLA claimed that they represented other ethnic groups as well, and were reportedly joined by some Arab leaders. 
The MNLA's leader Bilal A. G. Achiraf said that the onus was on Mali to either give the Saharan peoples their self-determination or they would take it themselves. Another Tuareg-dominated group, the Islamist Ansar Dain, initially fought alongside the MNLA against the government. Unlike the MNLA, it did not seek independence but rather the imposition of Islamic law across Mali. The movement's leader Iyad A.G. Ghali was part of the early 1990s rebellion and has been reported to be linked to an offshoot of Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb that is led by his cousin Hamada A.G. Hama as well as Algeria's de copyright partment du renseignement et de la sa copyright cura de copyright. Mali was going through several crises at once that favoured the rise of the conflict. The first attacks of the rebellion took place in Ma Copyright Naka, a small town in far eastern Mali, on 16 and January 17, 2012. On January 17, attacks in Aguilhuk and Tesalit were reported. The Mali government claimed to have regained control of all three towns the next day. On January 24, the rebels retook Aguilhuk after the Malian army ran out of ammunition. The next day the Mali government once again recaptured the city. Mali launched air and land counter-operations to take back the seized territory, amid protests in Bamako and Kadi. Malian President Amadou Toumani Toura copyright then reorganized his senior commanders for the fight against the rebels. On February 1, 2012, the MNLA took control of the city of Minica when the Malian army operated what they called a tactical retreat. The violence in the north led to counter-protests in the capital city of Bamako. Dozens of Malian soldiers were also killed in fighting in Aguilhuk. On February 6, rebel forces attacked Kedal, a regional capital. On March 4, 2012, a new round of fighting was reported near the formerly rebel-held town of Tesalit. The next day, three Malian army units gave up trying to lift the siege. The United States Air Force airdropped supplies via C-130 Hercules aircraft in support of the besieged Malian soldiers. The C-130A Euro trademark S most likely came from either Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso, or Mauritania, both of which are known to have been used by the United States military. On March 11, the MNLA retook Tesalit and its airport and the Malian military forces fled towards the border with Algeria. The rebels advanced to about 125 kilometers away from Timbuktu and their advance was unchecked when they entered without fighting in the towns of Dira Copyright and Goundam. Ansar Dine stated that it had control of the Mali-Algeria border. On March 21, 2012, Soldiers were dissatisfied with the head they got and with the course of the conflict attacked Defense Minister Sadio Gassima as he arrived to speak to them. They then stoned the minister's car, forcing him to flee the camp. Later that day, soldiers stormed the presidential palace, forcing Tura copyright into hiding. The next morning, Captain Amadou Sinogo the chairman of the new National Committee for the Restoration of Democracy and State, made a statement in which he announced that the junta had suspended Mali's constitution and taken control of the nation. The mutineers cited Tura copyright s alleged poor handling of the insurgency and the lack of equipment for the Malian army as their reasons for the rebellion. The CNRDR would serve as an interim regime until power could be returned to a new, democratically elected government. The coup was unanimously condemned by the international community, including by the United Nations Security Council, the African Union, and the Economic Community of West African States, 
the latter of which announced on March 29 that the CNRDR had 72 hours to relinquish control before landlocked Mali's borders would be closed by its neighbours, its assets would be frozen by the West African Economic and Monetary Union and individuals in the CNRDR would receive freezes on their assets and travel bans. ECOWAS and the African Union also suspended Mali. The US, the World Bank, and the African Development Bank suspended development aid funds in support of ECOWAS and the O's reactions to the coup. CATE d'Ivoire President Alas Sain Watara who was the rotational chairman of ECOWAS, said that once the civilian government was restored an ECOWAS standby force of 2,000 soldiers could intervene against the rebellion. Burkina Faso's president Blaise Kambar was appointed as a mediator by ECOWAS to resolve the crisis. An agreement was reached between the junta and ECOWAS negotiators on April 6 in which both Sinogo and Tura copyright would resign, sanctions would be lifted, the mutineers would be granted amnesty, and power would pass to National Assembly of Mali Speaker Dayun Kounda Traora copyright. Following Traora copyright's inauguration, he pledged to wage a total and relentless war on the Tuareg rebels unless they released their control of northern Malian cities. During the uncertainty following the coup, the rebels launched an offensive with the aim of capturing several towns and army camps abandoned by the Malian army. Though the offensive ostensibly included both the MNLA and Ansar Dyn, according to Jeremy Keenan of the University of London's School of Oriental and African Studies, Ansar Dyn's military contribution was slight. What seems to happen is that when they move into a town, the MNLA take out the military base a euro not that there's much resistance a euro and Iad goes into town and puts up his flag and starts bossing everyone around about Sharia law. On March 30, 2012, the rebels seized control of Ketil, the capital of Ketil region, as well as Ansongo and Burem in Ga region. On March 31, Gao fell to the rebels, and both MNLA and Ansar Dine flags appeared in the city. The following day, rebels attacked Timbuktu, the last major government-controlled city in the north, they captured it with little fighting. The speed and ease with which the rebels took control of the north was attributed in large part to the confusion created in the army's coup leading Reuters to describe it as a spectacular own goal. On April 6, 2012, stating that it had secured all of its desired territory, the MNLA declared independence from Mali. However, the declaration was rejected as invalid by the African Union and the European Union. After the withdrawal of Malian government forces from the region, Former CO belligerents Ansar Dine, Mochwe, and the MNLA soon found themselves in conflict with each other as well as the populace. On April 5, 2012, Islamists, possibly from AQIM or Mochwe, entered the Algerian consulate in Gao and took hostages. The MNLA succeeded in negotiating their release without violence and one MNLA commander said that the movement had decided to disarm other armed groups. On April 8, a mostly Arab militia calling itself the National Liberation Front of Azawad announced its intention to oppose Tuareg rule, battle the MNLA, and return to peace and economic activity, the group claimed to consist of 500 fighters. The MNLA clashed with protesters in Gao on May 14, reportedly injuring four and killing one. On June 6, residents of Ketil protested against the imposition of Sharia in the town and in support of MNLA, protests which were violently dispersed by Ansar Dine members.
By the night of June 8, MNLA and Ansar Dine rebels clashed against each other in the city with automatic weapons, with two dying in the skirmish. In early June, Nigerian President Muhammad Awisafu stated that Afghan and Pakistani jihadists were training Tuareg Islamist rebels. Clashes began to escalate between the MNLA and the Islamists after a merger attempt failed, despite the signing of a power-sharing treaty. Protests broke out on June 26, 2012 in the city of Gao, the majority of whose people are not Tuaregs, but rather sub-Saharan groups such as the Songhai and Fula peoples. The protesters opposed the Tuareg rebels and the partition of Mali. Two were killed as a result of the protests, allegedly by MNLA troops. The protesters used both Malian and Islamist flags, and France 24 reported that many locals supported the Islamists as a result of their opposition to the Tuareg nationalists and the secession of Azawad. On June 26, 2012, the tension came to all-out combat in Gao between the MNLA and Mochwe, with both sides firing heavy weapons. MNLA Secretary General Bilal A. G. Achiraf was wounded in the battle. The MNLA were soon driven from the city, and from Kedal and Timbuktu shortly after. However, the MNLA stated that it continued to maintain forces and control some rural areas in the region. As of October 2012, the MNLA retained control of the city of Ma Copyright Naka, with hundreds of people taking refuge in the city from the rule of the Islamists, and the city of Tinzawadin near the Algerian border. In the same month, a splinter group broke off from the MNLA, calling itself the Front for the Liberation of the Azawad. The group stated that Tuareg independence was no longer a realistic goal and that they must concentrate on fighting the Islamists. On September 1, 2012, Mojwe took over the southern town of Duinsa, which had previously been held by a Songhai secular militia the Ganda ISO. A Mochwe spokesman said that the group had had an agreement with the Ganda ISO, but had decided to occupy the town when the militia appeared to be acting independently, and gained control of the town following a brief standoff with Ganda ISO. Once Mochwe troops surrounded the city, the militia reportedly surrendered without a fight and were disarmed. On November 16, 2012, Tuareg MNLA forces launched an offensive against Gao in an attempt to retake the town. However, by the end of the day, the Tuaregs were beaten back by the Mojwe forces after the Islamists laid an ambush for them. A Malian security source said that at least a dozen MNLA fighters were killed while the Islamists suffered only one dead. An MNLA official stated that their forces killed 13 Mojwe fighters and wounded 17, while they suffered only 9 wounded. On November 19, 2012, Mojwe and AQIM forces took over the eastern town of Ma Copyright Naka, which had previously been held by the MNLA, with dozens of fighters from both sides and civilians killed. On the first day of fighting, the MNLA claimed its forces killed 65 Islamist fighters, while they suffered only one dead and 13 wounded. The Islamists for their part stated they killed more than 100 MNLA fighters and captured 20. Following requests from both the Mali government and Ikawas for foreign military intervention, on October 12, 2012 the United Nations Security Council unanimously, under Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter, passed a French resolution approving an African-led force to assist the Army of Mali in combating the Islamist militants.
the resolution gave 45 days for detailed and actionable recommendations for military intervention which would be drafted by ECOWAS and the African Union, with a figure of 3,000 proposed troops reported. A prior ECOWAS plan had been rejected by diplomats as lacking sufficient detail. While authorizing the planning of force, and dedicating UN resources to this planning, UN Security Council Resolution 2071 does not authorize the deployment of force. However, UN Security Council Resolution 2085, passed on December 20, 2012, authorizes the deployment of an African-led international support mission in Mali for an initial period of one year. On January 8, 2013, rebels were reported by Al Jazeera to have captured 12 Malian government troops near the town of Kana. On the same day, RFI reports that governmental troops fired warning shots and slightly progressed from Kana toward Duinsa. By December, the now displaced MNLA began peace talks with the Malian government and relinquished its previous goal of Azawadi independence in favor of a request for self rule within Mali. After the French entry in January 2013, the MNLA spokesman in Paris, Moussa A. G. Asarid declared that the MNLA was ready to help their former opponents in the fight against the Islamists. At this time, the MNLA controlled no big localities and was only strong in rural and desert areas near the borders with Mauritania, Algeria, and Niger, having been driven off from most of its claimed territory by Islamist groups. After the declaration, the MNLA re-engaged the Islamist forces, and, with the help of one defecting Islamist faction, retook the cities of Tessalit and Kedal in late January. On January 10, 2013, Islamist forces captured the strategic town of Kana, located 600 kilometers from the capital, from the Malian army. Later, an estimated 1,200 Islamist fighters advanced to within 20 kilometers of Mopti, a nearby Mali military garrison town. The following day, the French military launched OPA copyright ration serval, intervening in the conflict. According to analysts, the French were forced to act sooner than planned because of the importance of SA copyright Vara copyright military airport, located 60 kilometers south of Kana, for further operations. The operation included the use of gazelle helicopters from the special forces, which stopped an Islamist column advancing to Mopti, and the use of four Mirage 2000D jets of the Arma copyright Ida El Air operating from a base in Chad. Twelve targets were hit by the Mirages during the night between the 11th and the 12th. The French Chief of Army Staff, A. Perthousand Duard Guillaudet, announced that the Islamists had withdrawn from Kana and retreated several dozen of kilometers into the north. The airstrikes reportedly destroyed half a dozen Islamist armed pickup trucks and a rebel command center. One French pilot, Lt. Damien Boitheux, was killed after his attack helicopter was downed by ground fire during the operation. During the night of January 11, 2013, the Malian army, backed by French troops, claimed it had regained control of the town of Kana, and claimed to have killed over 100 Islamists. Afterwards, a Malian lieutenant said that mopping up operations were taking place around Kana. AFP witnesses had seen dozens of Islamist corpses around Kana with one saying he counted 46 bodies. The French stated four rebel vehicles were hit by their airstrikes, while the Malian army claimed nearly 30 vehicles were bombed. Several dozens of Malian soldiers and 10 civilians were also killed. A resident of Gao, 
the headquarters of the Mochway, said that the city's hospital had been overwhelmed with dead and wounded. In all, one local resident counted 148 bodies around Kana. In the wake of the French deployment, E. Kawas said that it had ordered troops to be deployed immediately to Mali. The UN Security Council said that the previously planned unled force would be deployed in the near future, and the European Union said it had increased preparations for sending military training troops into Mali. The MNLA also offered to join the offensive against the Islamists. On January 12 the British government announced that it was deploying two Royal Air Force C-17 transport planes in a non-combat role to ferry primarily French but also potentially African forces into Mali. On January 13, regional security sources announced the death in Kana of Abdel Krim nicknamed Kojak, a high-level leader in the Ansardine group. French Defence Minister L.E. Dryan said that new airstrikes were ongoing in Mali, happened during the last night and will happen the next day as well. A resident of Law Copyright R.A. Copyright told that airstrikes had been conducted in the area. The airstrikes were concentrated on three areas, Kana, Law Copyright R.A. Copyright and Duinsa. Two helicopters were seen attacking Islamist positions in Gao. A dozen strikes targeted the city and its outskirts. A resident reported that all Islamist bases around Gao had been taken out of operation by the strikes. An Islamist base in Kedal was targeted by the French Air Force. French Defence Minister L.E. Dryan announced that four Rafale fighters had participated in the Gao airstrikes. They left France and are now based in Chad. It was reported that following the strikes which destroyed their bases, the Mujao forces left Gao. Residents reported that 60 Islamists died in the Gao airstrikes. Some other were hiding in the houses and picked the dead bodies during the night. On January 14, the Islamists attacked the city of Diabali 400 kilometers north of Bamako, in the government-held areas. They came from the Mauritanian border where they fled to avoid the airstrikes. The AQIM leader known as Abu Zaid was leading the operation. On the same day, Islamists pledged to launch attacks on French soil. Jihadists took control of Diabali a few hours after their attacks. On January 15, the French defence minister confirmed that the Mali military had still not recaptured Kana from rebel forces, despite earlier claims that they did. Meanwhile, the Royal Canadian Air Force dispatched a C-17 transport plane to Mali in a similar role as those of the British C-17S. The Danish parliament decided to contribute a C-130 transport plane and the Belgian government made the decision to send two C-130s along with one medical component Augusta A-109 Medivac medical evacuation helicopter along with 80 support personnel to Mali. On January 16, it was reported that a group of AQIM militants had crossed the border from Mali into Algeria and had captured an algerian slash statoil slash bp owned natural gas field, in AMA copyright NAS, near the border with Libya. The militants were reported to have killed two foreign nationals and were holding 41 foreign nationals hostage and a spokesman for the group said that the purpose of the attack was to get revenge on the countries that had intervened in Mali. The hostages reportedly included several American, Japanese, British, Romanian, Filipino and Norwegian citizens. Algeria was reportedly negotiating with the militants to try and obtain the hostages' release. On January 19 11 militants and seven hostages were killed in a final assault to end the standoff. In addition, 16 foreign hostages were freed, 
including two Americans, two Germans, and one Portuguese. On January 16, French Special Forces, along with the Malian Army, began fighting small and mobile groups of jihadists inside the city of Diabeli, but the French defense minister has denied the presence of French troops fighting in Diabeli. On the same day, the government of Spain approved the dispatch of one transport aircraft to Mali for the purposes of logistical and training support. Meanwhile, the government of Germany authorized the contribution of two Transall C-160 transport aircraft to ferry African troops into the capital Bamako. Likewise, the government of Italy pledged air transport-based logistical support. On January 17, Benamba was put on alert after Islamists were reportedly spotted near the town. The Malian army immediately deployed 100 soldiers to the town, which were reinforced later. A convoy of Islamists reportedly left Diabeli and was heading towards Benamba on the same day, but no fighting ultimately took place in the town. On January 18, the Malian army released a statement claiming to have complete control of Kana again. The claim was confirmed by residents of Kana as well as a spokesman for Ansar Aldain. The same day, rebels were driven out of Diabeli according to multiple local sources. Reports came out on January 19 that residents of Gao had lynched Ali Uturi, a prominent Islamist leader and the Mojwe police commissioner of the city, in retaliation for the killing of a local journalist, Kader Turi. AFP cited local reports saying that the Islamists were beginning to leave other areas under their control to seek refuge in the mountainous and difficult-to-access Kedal region. On the same day, two Nigerian soldiers were killed and five were injured by Islamists near the Nigerian town of Okin as they were heading toward Mali. On January 20, the United States denied that they had attempted to bill the French for American support in the conflict. U.S. Air Force C-17S began to fly in French troops and supplies the next day. On January 21 French and Malian troops entered Diabeli without resistance. Duinsa was also taken on the same day. On the evening of January 24 Malian soldiers took control of Hamborai. On the same day a splinter group of Ansar Aldine, calling itself the Islamic Movement for Azawad, stated that it wanted to seek a peaceful solution to the conflict and urged France and Mali to cease hostilities in the north in order to create a climate of peace which will pave the way for an inclusive political dialogue. On January 26, French special forces took over the airport and an important bridge in the city of Gao which remained largely Islamist held. The troops reported harassment from Islamist forces but no solid resistance to their operations. The city was taken by a French-backed Malian force later that day. A new split happened in Ansar Dine with one of its commanders in law copyright R.A. copyright, Kamu A.G. mainly quitting the group and joining the MNLA. On January 27, French and Malian forces encircled Timbuktu and began securing the city. After gaining the airport on January 27, the next day, Malian and French military sources claimed that the entire area between Gao and Timbuktu was under government control and access to the city was available. The city was fully taken by French and Malian forces by the next day. On January 28, the MNLA took control of Kedal with the help of the Islamic movement of Azawad an Ansar Dine breakaway group that split after the international intervention. The MNLA also took control of the towns of Tessalit and Inkalil. Apparently, fighters who deserted the MNLA for the better-financed Ansar Dine were now returning to the MNLA.
Islamists were reported to have fled to the mountains. On January 29, the first non-Malian African troops entered North Mali. Nigerian soldiers occupied Ansongo and Chadian troops, Ma copyright Naka. The more numerous Chadian army was also reported as moving north from Ma copyright Naka in support of the Malian army. On January 30, French reached Kedal Airport. No Malian soldiers were with them, as a confrontation with Tuaregs was feared. The town was reportedly under control of fighters from both the MNLA and missing in action. The MNLA, however denied any collaboration or even a desire to collaborate with the missing in action, and stated that their fighters were maintaining control of the town alongside French forces. Many leaders of Ansar Dain left Iyad A.G. Gali. Delegations from the MNLA and Missing in Action left for Ouagadougou to negotiate with Malian officials. On February 2, Chadian troops from Misma reached Kedal and stationed in a deserted base in the city. Their general said that they had no problem with the MNLA and had good relations with them. On the same day, the French president, Frana Ois Holland, joined Mali's interim president, Dion Kounditraora Copyright, in a public appearance in recently recaptured Timbuktu. On February 5, according to Chadian news stations, 24 Chadian soldiers were killed and 11 were wounded when they were ambushed by jihadists during a patrol north of Kedal. The information was neither denied nor confirmed by Chadian and Malian authorities. However, the Chadian government did mention that 11 soldiers were injured in a traffic accident north of Kedal. On February 8, French and Chadian troops announced that they had occupied Tessalit near the Algerian border, the seat of one of the last airports still not controlled by the Malian government and its allies. Islamist and Tuareg forces were reported to have retreated to the Adrar de Ifagas, rugged badlands in northeastern Mali. Knowledge of and control over local sources of water is expected to play a vital role in continuing conflict in that area. On February 19, France began a new operation intended to subdue the region. Between 8 and February 10, Mujoa Euro who had been harassing government forces from the outskirts since Malian and French forces took the city on January 26 A Euro launched the first two suicide attacks of the war in Gao, resulting in the death of the two bombers and injuring a Malian soldier and a civilian. Islamist fighters armed with AK-47S then crossed the Niger River on canoes took over an abandoned police station and deployed snipers in nearby buildings in anticipation of the government forces counterattack. The situation was controlled by pro-government forces after heavy fighting which included an air attack on the police station by French helicopters. On February 19, Islamists attacked a French parachute regiment of 150 soldiers supported by a heavy vehicle patrol and Mirage fighter jets. One French commando, a sergeant, was killed and so were 20 Islamist militants. Gao was attacked a second time on February 20. Islamists again crossed the Niger and came close to the city hall, possibly with help from locals. The same day, a car bomb exploded in Kedal, killing two people. The fighting in Gao subsided after five Islamists were killed by Malian soldiers. On February 22, 2013, 13 Chadian soldiers and 65 Islamists were killed during heavy fighting in the northern mountains. The same day two suicide bombers crashed their cars into the MNLA's local operations center in the town of Inkalil, killing five people including three MNLA fighters and both bombers. 
U.S. President Obama announced on February 22, 2013 that about 100 American troops had been sent to Niger, which borders Mali, to aid the French in Mali. The most recent U.S. troops were sent to help set up a new air base, from which to conduct surveillance against Al-Qaeda. Forty U.S. Air Force logistics specialists, intelligence analysts, and security officers arrived in the capital of Niger on February 20, 2013, bringing the total Americans deployed in Niger to 100. On February 24, 28 Islamists and 10 Chadian soldiers were killed while fighting in the Adjur de Ifagas Mountains in northern Mali. On February 26, a car bomb exploded in Kedal targeting a MNLA checkpoint. At least seven MNLA fighters along with the suicide bomber were killed in the attack. On March 20, AQIM claimed to have executed a French hostage in Mali, Philippe Verdun, who had been kidnapped in 2011. On March 23, Islamist fighters from Mujao attacked the city of Gao, causing heavy fighting for two hours. The Malian army eventually repulsed this attack. On March 30, a suicide bomber detonated his explosives near a Malian army checkpoint in Timbuktu, allowing a group of jihadists to infiltrate by night. By April 1, with the help of a French army detachment supported by war jets, the Malian army pushed the jihadists out of the city centre. On April 29, a French paratrooper was killed by a roadside bomb in northern Mali, the sixth French soldier to die in the conflict. Two others were seriously injured. On February 28, Algerian television informed that Abdelhamid Abu Zaid, one of the three top men of AQIM and deemed responsible of several kidnappings of Westerners in the Sahel in the 2000s, had been killed in battle against Franco-Chadian forces in the Tyregar Mountains along with about 40 of his followers, some kilometers away from Aguilhuk. The information was neither confirmed nor denied by the French army. On March 2, 2013, it was reported that Mokhtar Belmokhtar, mastermind of the Inaminas hostage crisis in which 800 hostages had been taken and 39 Westerners killed at an Algerian oil refinery, had been killed as well. Chadian state television announced that Chadian forces in Mali completely destroyed the main jihadist base in the Adjurda Ifhagas Mountains, killing several terrorists including leader Mokhtar Belmokhtar, according to a BBC report. BBC correspondent Thomas Fessy said this would be a major blow if confirmed. On March 4, 2013, Al-Qaeda's North African branch confirmed the death of Abu Zaid, but denied that Belmokhtar had been killed. Now that the bulk of the conflict is over and the need for extended military involvement is decreasing, France looks to the UN to take over with the peacekeeping force that had been suggested earlier in the conflict once it was a more stable situation. The operation was termed MINUSMA. On April 14, Chadian President Idris de Copyright by Itno announced the full withdrawal of Chadian forces in Mali, saying that face-to-face -face fighting with Islamists is over and the Chadian army does not have the skills to fight a guerrilla-style war. This announcement comes days after a suicide bomber killed four Chadian soldiers in Kedal, where 1,800 of its soldiers are currently stationed. According to local sources, Chadian forces have already begun to withdraw troops prior to the formal announcement, including a mechanist battalion. A peace deal between the government and Tuareg rebels was signed on June 18, 2013. The MNLA ended the ceasefire in September of the same year after government forces opened fire on unarmed protesters. 
Following the attack, MNLA Vice President Mahamad Aujari Mega remarked, What happened is a declaration of war. We will deliver this war. Wherever we find the Malian army we will launch the assault against them. It will be automatic. The warnings are over. One of the MNLA's founders, Atay A. G. Mohammed, was also quoted as saying that the political and military wings of the Azawad had declared the lifting of the ceasefire with the central government. On January 25, a source within the Malian security forces reported that a French military operation in the Tombuctu region of northern Mali resulted in the deaths of 11 Muslim fighters. On February 20, Germany and France announced the shipment of elements of the Franco-German Brigade to Mali to help train Mali troops. This is the first deployment of EU troops in Africa. 2012 Fatalities, 133 2013 Fatalities 9 Plus On January 17, a Chadian Minusma peacekeeper was killed in an attack on a French UN camp in Kedal. On June 11, a car bomb killed four Chadian peacekeepers in Aguilhug. On September 18, five Chadian Minusma peacekeepers were killed by a land mine. The Chadian government described the incident as discriminatory and said its soldiers were being used as shields. On October 23, Two Chadian peacekeepers were killed in an attack in Tessalit. On May 5, 2017 a rocket hit a Minamsa base killing a Liberian soldier and injuring seven other soldiers, including several Liberians and a Swedish soldier. June 2017 Bamako attack on June 18 Jamaat Nasr al-Islam while Muslim and Islamists attacked a luxury resort in Bamako killing five people including one Portuguese soldier six attackers were also killed in the shooting and hostage taking. Following several reports of abuse from both sides, the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court opened a case investigating war crimes in Mali on January 16, 2013. This case is the quickest any ICC investigation has begun after foreign military intervention. In May 2012, Amnesty International released a report stating that the conflict had created Mali's worst human rights situation since 1960. The organization stated that fighters with the MNLA and Ansar Dain were running riot in Mali's north and documented instances of gang rape, extrajudicial executions and the use of child soldiers by both Tuareg and Islamist groups. On April 3, 2012, armed groups looted 2,354 tons of food from United Nations World Food Programme's warehouses in Kedal, Gao and Timbuktu causing the WFP to suspend its operations in northern Mali. Other targets of looting included hospitals, hotels, government offices, Oxfam offices, and the offices and warehouses of other unnamed aid groups. The WFP also stated that 200,000 had so far fled the fighting, predicting that the number would rise. Ansar El Dine also blocked a humanitarian convoy bringing medical and food aid from reaching Timbuktu on May 15, objecting to the presence of women in the welcoming committee set up by city residents. After negotiations, the convoy was released on the following day. The group reportedly banned video games, Malian, and Western music, bars, and football in Gao and ransacked alcohol serving establishments in both Gao and Kedal. Islamist forces were also reported to have intervened against looters and ordered women to wear head scarves. The CNRDR's spokesman Amadou Konare claimed that women and girls have been kidnapped and raped by the new occupants who are laying down their own law.
The anti-slavery organization Timd claims that ex-slaves were the first targeted for punishment by Islamist forces and that former masters have used the violence to recapture ex-slaves. On July 29, 2012, a couple was stoned to death by Islamists in Aguilhuk for having children outside of marriage. An official reported that many people left the town for Algeria following the incident. On August 9, Islamist militants chopped off the hand of an alleged thief in the town of Ansongo, despite a crowd pleading with the militants for mercy. During the conflict, Islamists also damaged or destroyed a number of historical sites on the grounds that they said were idolatrous, particularly in Timbuktu a UNESCO World Heritage Site. On May 4, 2012, Ansar Dine members reportedly burned the tomb of a Sufi saint. In late June, Islamists attacked several more sites in Timbuktu with pickaxes and shovels. On January 28, 2013, as French-led Malian troops captured the airport of the World Heritage Town of Timbuktu, the Ahmed Baba Institute, host of priceless ancient manuscripts, was raised by fleeing Islamists. The Tuaregs and Arabs who lived in Bamako and elsewhere in southern Mali were subjects of a rash of ethnic attacks by black Malians, despite many of them being hostile to Azawad separatism as well as the Islamists. In fact, a large part of them actually had only recently arrived to the government held south, fleeing the violence in the north. An incident arose on September 8, 2012 when a group of Malian soldiers detained 17 unarmed Tablai preachers from Mauritania in Dagafri, northeast of Diabali, while en route to a religious conference in Bamako and executed all but one of them without reporting to their own command. The Malian government expressed its condolences for the event, which Associated Press considered a symptom of the disintegration of discipline and command in the Malian army as a result of the March 21st coup. On January 19, Human Rights Watch report killings and other human rights abuses committed by the Malian army in the central Malian town of Niano. Tuaregs and Arabs were especially targeted. On January 23, 2013, BBC reported claims by the International Federation of Human Rights that Malian army soldiers had carried out summary executions against people suspected of being militant and with bodies subsequently being hastily buried in makeshift graves and wells. Some victims were reportedly killed for not having identity documents or for their ethnicity. Reportedly, dozens of ethnic Tuaregs living in Bamako had their homes raided by government troops. Mali earned the first win in the 2013 Africa Cup of Nations Football Championship on January 20, 2013 with a 1 Euro 0 win over Niger. After scoring the only goal, Sidukita displayed a t-shirt with a peace sign on it. A number of musicians from Mali came together to record the song Mali K.O. and release a video Voices United for Mali Mali K.O. in early 2013 about the ongoing conflict in the country. The collaboration includes many well-known Malian musicians, including Umu Sangara Copyright, View Farkatura Copyright, and Amadou and Mariam. A ceasefire was agreed upon on February 20, 2015 between the Malian government and the northern rebels. The terms of the truce state that both sides agreed to, as the AFP news agency put it, tackle the causes of lasting tensions in the region. Mali's leaders have rejected autonomy, but are willing to consider devolved local powers.